What is going on guys, BCD here, back with another quick video. And today I kind of just wanted to talk about how I am preparing for these Xbox Series X and PS5 I'm getting. Uh, I am getting them on launch day and it's expensive people. So I'm trying to figure out the best way. So I'm gonna talk through it with you guys. Maybe you guys got some ideas, leave them in the comment section below. Yes, I'm trying to siphon from y'all too. But these are some of the things that I'm doing right now to try to get, you know, prepared to not break the pockets so much, but also, you know, get stuff that I need. Obviously, I've been saving for both the PS5 and Xbox Series X, so that's not a problem. At this point, it's all the additional stuff around it. And what you kind of want to do to try to save some money here and there. Big thing that came about when it started talking about the new PlayStation and the Series X is storage. Uh, how do we get fast storage and how do we make sure that we, you know, take advantage of everything and expanding on that storage. So there is functionality within the PS5 and the Series X that you can't get with an external hard drive or an external SSD. Um, so you have to either buy this proprietary uh, thing that, you know, Microsoft sells from Seagate for $219 or you can not do that, which I, I opted to not do that because uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to try to save costs where I can if I want to down the line. That being it, that being it's proprietary, it may never go down, but hopefully at some point it drops in price and that's when I'll buy in. But one terabyte for $219 just isn't hitting for me, so I wouldn't want to do that. Um, on the PlayStation side, they haven't really talked about it at all. And it's weird because we're almost we're pretty close. They haven't talked about how external hard drives will work. They haven't talked about how, you know, the SSD, it, will it use some of the same features? I'm assuming so because they have such, you know, a high demand for what you can put in there. And most of those haven't even released yet. So they're going to be very popular and they're probably not going to be around long for people to buy them if they really wanted to expand their storage on their PS5. So right now, it's just a lost case for that. So that's why I'm moving most of my third-party games I'm going to play onto the Series X because I know what they're going to be doing. So anything I buy, like Call of Duty, if I'm buying Watch Dogs, if I'm buying anything third-party, you know, Assassin's Creed, if I buy that game. I don't think I am, but if I do, I'm going to buy it on an Xbox because at least I know what to expect. And I already bought an SSD. I was on Amazon Prime Day. I got a pretty good deal for a two terabyte Samsung one. Um, I forget what you know version it is, but I'll put it right here somewhere for you guys to see. Uh, but I was able to get a pretty good deal for it. I got like one, I pay end up paying like 158 uh, for a two terabyte. And I felt comfortable with that purchase because I need to expand my storage, but I don't want to expand it in a way where it's slow. So I already have a two terabyte external hard drive where it's extremely slow to read and write and I just couldn't do it. So now I have a two terabyte external hard drive for my backup backups and then now I have a two terabyte SSD for my you know first line of defense backup and then I just had the one terabyte of storage or 860 gigabytes that they give on the Series X to take advantage of the you know resume play and all of the new features with their uh, technology. So I would say do the same thing. If you're gonna if you're not getting the Series X and you're just getting the PS5, there's really nothing you can do at this point. I don't know how external tries will work and if you're gonna be able to move things back and forth. I would hope that functionality will be there. So keep your keep your tar drives and things like that in, in around until they you know actually tell us what the, what's gonna be happening there. But you really can't prepare for that one, but you can prepare for the Series X if you are getting that or the Series S. I recommend getting a two terabyte SSD. Digital Foundry did a really good video on this stuff and that's where I got my idea from. So definitely um, watch that. I'll link that in the comment section below as well. Uh, or the description, I'm sorry. Uh, but the next thing that I'm doing, obviously, was to get the television that I wanted. Uh, I needed the HDMI 2.1 television with all of the features. Um, and I went with the Vizio OLED. Yes, another expensive purchase. Uh, so this one here was really difficult for me to find a TV that I really wanted to pay money for and thought was worth it. So this was what I dropped to because of 
at first off it was a price cut then I got some coupons then I got some you know cash back from using my Best Buy credit card so I was able to get it for around one thousand one hundred and fifty eight dollars anything above that I really I really anything above eleven hundred I went over budget fifty eight bucks because I did not want to pay anything over eleven hundred for a television that I felt you know wasn't really worth it but I want to take advantage of the features for the six or so games that is going to be coming out so I did take the bite the bullet and buy something that wasn't necessary wasn't necessary but I want it um I feel like anybody would have a good time with anything that can do 4k 60 HDR has all you know the auto low latency mode and can automatically switch into game mode things like that if you have those features I think you'll be totally fine but you know me want to do the best of the best or at least have the best experience possible at the very beginning I kind of went through that I don't even know if this video is going to actually work because I haven't tried the HDMI 2.1 stuff yet I know it's a feature there and they say that it's already working but I can't try it I don't have a 3080 I don't have a 3090 I don't have any of these cars that work and support it so as of now as soon as I get it day one I'm expecting it to work but more than likely it may not so if you need to wait on that I would totally suggest it but me being impulsive and you know sometimes just ignorant uh, I went ahead and bought one and that was the Vizio OLED for me uh, the other TV that I recommend again is the TCL 6 series and I did a bunch of videos on both of those televisions if you want to check it out on the channel um, but yeah finding the right TV finding the best fit is a little more is a difficult as well so I kind of tried to minimize it for you guys. There's plenty of other options out there if you want to check up, check them out. But these are two that I wanted to go with and wanted to, you know, really advocate for because I felt like they were the best priced for the experience that you're going to get um, versus the rest of the competition. Next up, how I'm preparing, you know, how to save money. Where can you save money when you go into a next generation from the generation you're at now? Well, that's with the collection of games that you may have and the you know the accessories that you may have laying around um this is all going to be going through gamestop i don't resell often on ebay so most of my stuff is going to be at gamestop i did a pretty good video that was now old i might update it on how to sell to gamestop but basically i'm gonna link that one in the description as well but really you just want to take advantage of the extra percentage that they give you say for instance you are putting money towards a game and they say oh you get an extra 20 percent for for you know per, uh, actually trading in towards this game purchase if you do that you get a bunch of percentages extra on the games that you're going to be you know trading in and you also can take in things like your extra controllers you know you're not going to be using um, you know the gaming systems you can get okay um, benefits from there but Honestly, if you really want to sell them, I would sell them on eBay or something of that nature so that you can actually get a little bit more money. But they give you a decent price. It's not the best price, but they give you something at least. So if for instance you got a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One X, I think they're giving you around like 175 right now, which could go a long way in trying to purchase new games and things like that on day one. Because again, this is a very expensive hobby. You have to try to figure out how to cut corners somewhere. If there's games you bought and you no longer want, I know I'm getting rid of Last of Us 2 Remastered. I just, I mean Last of Us 2 because I'm just not going to play it again. Um, and then I'm going to be getting rid of games that I have for Nintendo Switch like Animal Crossing. I just don't play it anymore. I'm going to be getting rid of Astral Chain. I don't play it anymore. So it's games that I have in my collection and I'm going to be reselling. If you if you have a difficult time, you know, getting rid of things, this may not be the best option for you. But for me, once I beat something, and this is why I always, you know, advocate it for physical disc and physical, uh, the physical actual consoles that's coming out because... I am of the camp of once I beat something, I want to be able to resell that and I lose that um, ability if I buy all my stuff digitally. So I'm a huge advocate for buying the Series X and the PS5 um, physical edition because that way you still have the ability to buy games and resell. I'm buying Demon Souls and I'm buying Miles Morales, all physical. So once I beat those, I can resell and get some type of profit and put that towards something else, whether it be a trash game or not. 
I'm not going to be buying anything digital, not yet, because this is a very expensive hobby. And it's, again, it's just a hobby till I, you know, till something happens and I, it doesn't become that anymore and it becomes like an actual job, then right now I'm treating it like a hobby. And a hobby is you do it on the side and you take care of your real bills at first. So <laughs> this right here is the same way I'm treating this. Uh, so, you know, take a look at your inventory. Take a look at stuff that you really want to get rid of. Take a look at GameStop's options and how much they really want to give you for it. And kind of try to make a make a list of things that you can sell off now. So that way, when it comes to next gen, you're not trying to sell things where they're getting a, a huge influx of uh, inventory and may drop the price and may drop the, you know, the, 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 the value when you're trying to actually trade it in. So I would do that this week before the next two weeks. I would definitely do it this week uh, to make sure that you get the most value out of your options and your stuff here. Um, I know it's pretty scary that people may not get their systems and they may get counseled. But at this point in time, you should be more secure in that you're going to get yours because they should have counseled by now if you weren't. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Really, just look at the storage um storage for the the actual systems looking at the television that you may have maybe it's time for an upgrade maybe not maybe you just rock with the one you got now that's totally fine too i totally get that um you also taking a look at what your inventory looks like and how much you can actually sell in order to re and buy things and you know, make sure you keep the cost down of buying a new system I know that GameStop has some pretty good deals when the systems were pre on pre-order, but it was hard enough just trying to get a pre-order. So at this point, it's just like you just try to get as much money as you can accumulate it before you go in and do the pre-order. Maybe you, you, you know, dedicate yourself to doing it at GameStop. You take your stuff in to GameStop, get store credit and hold on to it to the point of time where you actually can go in and just, you know, buy your council outright. Um, those are other options that you can do. Because at this point, really, what are you really playing anyway? I'm not playing anything. I was playing Ghost of Tsushima, and I'm really enjoying that. But in, honestly, I can hold off on it. I went back to playing other games that I got on my Nintendo Switch, other things that I really wanted to get through that I couldn't get through. So a lot of this stuff, I'm like, I can get rid of it now and just wait two weeks, and then I get my PS5, and then I go back to playing certain games and things that I want to keep. Obviously, I'm not getting rid of Ghosts because I want to play the raid and everything like that. But there are certain things that you know, oh, I'm not going to play this anymore. And that's where you want to, that's where the value comes back into play. Uh, but that is pretty much it for me. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It does help the channel grow. We're almost at 2,000. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. And uh I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.